Good morning, folks. Morning. Jeepers, the sunset on most settings and houses. Good afternoon, good evening. Peter Lemieux here. Um, we're gonna play some games this afternoon. Glad to have you around. I'm waiting for some more people who are expecting to be joining us before we get started. Um, if you folks haven't been around me before, my name is Peter Lemieux, <clears throat> insurance exam queen. I am not the queen, but I thought that would be pretty obvious to you. Can you folks on the chat box tell me what state you're studying for? We're going to be playing health insurance questions today. So uh, it'd be nice to know the state you're studying for. And um, if you've taken the health insurance test yet, I already have my life licensing, not my health. Don't know anything about health, but I'm in Ohio. Okay, glad to have you in class, Hannah. Uh, who else wants to tell me about what we're doing in the health insurance field? Why you want a health insurance license? Anybody else? Obviously, you're not required to tell me anything, but it just makes a small class like this make it more fun if we knew each other. So let me tell you about myself. Uh, I have been in the insurance business for a long, 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 long time. And uh, selling, recruiting, training, managing, um, started off primary in life insurance, uh, then uh, did multi-line auto, home, life, and health. And for about the last 10 years, have really kind of focused in health insurance, uh, especially in the seniors and Medicare field. Um, at, during that period of time, I have been a teacher. And it's where I met Melissa. Um, we kind of hit it off. We have similar philosophies. And I'm delighted that uh, we were able to team up and I could help her with the insurance exam queen. She's a phenomenal teacher, very creative and exciting person. And if you've watched her videos, you know what I'm talking about. How ca exactly can we sell? I don't necessarily have applications. Where would I start? Well, the first thing you got to do is get a license, right? Once you got a license, then you get appointed by an insurance company who would appoint you and allow you to sell their policies. Depending on what company you wanna sell for or how it works, that may they may require a lot of them do training from their end to sell their policies. It really depends on what companies you wanna re represent and how they do it. And they would give you all the supplies, but you can't sell. First, you have to have a license with the state and then you need to get appointed by an insurance company. Okay, insurance companies are always looking for people to market their products. So that that field is unlimited for you once you have a license. And you got to decide, you know, what kind of health insurance do you want? Do you want to sell group to businesses? Do you want to sell individual health insurance policies? Do you want to sell Medicare supplements or things like that? And, and there's lots of products that are in this course disability income, long-term care insurance are all health insurance products. Um, and companies uh, who sell them would let you know that uh, you're required to have health license. So Hannah and I are having an interesting conversation. What about Brandon and Courtney? What states are you guys with? And um, where do you stand with the health insurance? You can either type it on the chat or you can turn your microphone on by clicking on the microphone and that uh, turns it on so we can all hear you. Um, it would be nice to know that you're actually here and not just looking at your name. So can you at least put a one or tell me what state you're from? What are we supposed to do, Hannah? I'm not in Ohio. I've been there. 
Ah, there's Brandon, Illinois. Welcome, Brandon. Um, since we're talking about Ohio, what city are you nearest, Hannah? Cleveland, Cincinnati, Dayton. Oh, okay, you're in a car. <laughs> don't talk to me. <laughs> I don't want you in a car accident. Columbus. You have lived a long time, Hannah. I'm 100 years old. I had a cousin who's about my age who in his youth decided he wanted to make a career in rock and roll. And he packed up a van with his local band and uh, they settled in Columbus, Ohio. And they for 20 plus years played rock and roll music in bars in Columbus and eventually bought a bar so they wouldn't have to travel. Now they've been disbanded no pun intended, for quite a while. So I doubt you've heard of them. Their name was Pure Jam and probably stopped playing together in the 90s sometime. One of the famous things about Pure Jam, other than my cousin, is their um, lead singer was John Mellencamp's brother. How about that? They actually okay band. Uh, they they were entertaining and uh, things like that. But you know, it's hard to make a lifetime of money in entertainment. Mary, welcome to class. Uh, my name is Peter Lemieux, and Hannah and I are talking about old time rock and roll. How's that? She's from Columbus, Ohio, home of the Ohio State University. Correct, Hannah? I'm doing this right. It's the Ohio State University. My um, college um, roommate uh, fell in love with a girl in college, and then she went to law school at the Ohio State University. He went to visit her, and she took him to a football game, and that was uh, too much for him to resist. He proposed marriage. He was so excited about that. And they've been married for over 50 years. A love story from Columbus. <laughs> Welcome, folks. Yes, you're at a game day with Peter Lemieux. We're going to have some fun. We're going to learn a little bit about health insurance. And hopefully that while having a good time, you pick up some ideas. I'm going to play games with you guys where we're going to ask you questions. You're going to answer. We're going to keep score. And in between the questions, I'm going to use that opportunity to teach some things about health insurance policies. Okay. So that's the way this is going to play out. Um, now the sign says Fatima, but I've had a lady in a couple of my classes, a wonderful lady named Fatima. Would that happen to be you? Or is there, in fact, another person named Fatima? Too many questions too early in the day, Peter. Leave me alone. But it's not morning. So I know how I got here. I know very little about how you guys got here, but let's see if we can have some fun. Uh, it says here that I'm supposed to have 20 people in the class and I am sitting here with five. So kind of dragging my heels because I don't want to get started, explain all the rules, have three people walk in the door and try to catch us in flight. But um, are people confused about the time? What did we do something to confuse you about the time? Time zones, maybe? It's three o'clock, pardon me, five o'clock central time. Yes, it seems like we do make recordings of this. Family pictures at six. You can't miss that, Brandon. Uh, we do make recordings of this. And um, they are usually available late tonight or tomorrow sometime. It'll be health insurance uh, free game with Peter. I don't know how Melissa's going to, uh, I don't make, I don't make the recordings and I don't send them out. I just sweep the floors, man. 
don't ask me what movie's playing. Go that that's what I do. Um, now I notice Fatima, your camera is on. Nice to see you. Are you my friend from other classes? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Or is this your first time? No, you're a new one. Okay, welcome to the fan club. <laughs> the dues are really, really high. <laughs> now, you don't have to have your camera on, okay? So if you, if you uh, it looks like you're in a library, all those books behind you. Do you have one of those fake screens? Okay, no wonder you can't talk. They'll kick you out, library. So anyways, you don't have to have your camera on, um, but you do need uh, to be able to see and hear me. And I would prefer it if you turn your mic off. The reason we want the mics off is if there's any background noise, it can interrupt the class, okay? And uh, it's easy enough to turn the mic on if you want to talk to me. Just say, you know, Peter, that didn't make any sense. I disagree with you. You got spinach in your teeth. What, whatever you want to tell me, okay? Just, just feel free. Um, I'm not going to wait around for the rest of the people so that uh, they maybe want to do it uh, when they get a copy of this online, okay? So the next thing is I'm going to introduce you to our game. So what you should be able to see right now is a screen that says Peter Medical Plans. This is the start to our game. And um, you should be able to see me, hear me, and look at that screen. Uh, so if that all looks right to you, put a number one in the chat box. Um, if there's a problem with it, let me know. Put in the chat box, I can't see it, or say something on the screen. So. Some of you may have played this game before. It's a game both Melissa and I like. We like it for lots of reasons. It's fun. It's got a little bit of competition built into it. And it allows us to actually create the game. And Melissa and I write the questions to these games. And which means if you see the question and it's misspelled, <laughs> that's me. But we try not to misspell them, okay? But it allows us to ask the question and then teach you a little bit about the health insurance and the types of questions you're going to see on your state exam. Fair enough? I'm going to launch the game, and here's how it played. You'll be asked to sign in, give yourself a name, and the way you score is by getting the question correct. You get points. You also get points by answering quickly. If Brandon and Fatima both get it right. The one who answered first gets a few more points. So speed is, you know, it helps you out, but you don't get any points if you miss the question. Now I had five people here, now I have four. So I'm expecting that shortly someone's gonna want to be coming in. I'll just let them in as we go. Let's see if we can get started. What you need to do is you need to go to a website. You can do it on another screen. You can do it on your phone. A lot of people just pay, play on their phone. It's called kahoot.it, K-A-H-O-O-T dot it. And they're gonna ask you for a PIN number. The PIN number for our game is 325-4022. And then you can sign in. Han Solo is already playing. And Brandon is in. I put the number in the chat box. If you leave the class and come back in, you can play the game while it's going. You don't have to wait for a game to start up to join. All you need to do is go to kahoot.it and enter the PIN number. It must obviously ask for your name uh, because I have two people in with um, their identities. I would like to have more than two people play in the game. So if you can all try to get in, that would be great. Mama Bear is here. And uh, there are right now only four of you in the class. Three of you are in the game. Um, it, if you're Brennan, I don't want you driving a car playing the game, okay? I, I don't want to find out 
that you're making your health insurance work for you by being in a hospital, okay? So try to win. More importantly is to just learn what the question is and what the right answer is. That will help the most, okay? So I got somebody coming in and just give me a second to introduce myself to her and invite her in. Uh, LaDonna, welcome to our class. We are just beginning a game called Kahoot. And to play that game, what you need to do is go to a website. You can do it on your phone, which is most popular, or another screen on your computer. You put kahoot.it, and it'll ask you for a PIN number. The PIN number for our game is 3254022. Um, I want to play games with you people for a couple of hours, so I've prepared more than one Kahoot game. Uh, I don't know how much we're going to go through. It's it's not a race for me. It's it's a, like playing the game. So uh, with that said, four people signed in. LaDonna, all you need to do is kahoot.it and then enter the PIN number. If we get started, you can join in progress. Just make sure you have the PIN number. So enough of the instructions. This will all make sense to us to you as we play the game, okay? So I'm going to start, and it will say Kahoot at home. I will read only the question. Peter, medical plans. It means I wrote the test, okay? First question, first dollar, low limits. Two choices. LaDonna, go to kahoot.it, K-A-H-O-O-T dot it. And it'll ask you for the PIN number. So the answer to this is basic medical, not major medical. Um, LaDonna, I hope that that is enough information for you. If not, just keep talking on the chat, okay? Kahoot.it and then enter the PIN number, which is 325 -4022. All right, we have two major genres of health insurance policy. The one you're probably most familiar with is a major medical policy. This is what we call a comprehensive policy. It has very high limits of coverage. Uh, if you have a $200,000 hospital bill, that's not a problem for the, them to come in. Usually, with major medicals, you have to pay a deductible. Um, now, if the basic medical, which is called a limited policy, there's no deductible. Whoopee, they pay from the first dollar. But the problem with those plans being limited is they don't cover everything, number one. And number two, they have very low limits. Like they only might pay $1,000 a day in a hospital, which if you've ever been in a hospital, is ridiculously low, but that's the way a limited policy works. We also call them basic medical or limited rather than a major medical uh, policy. So that is the answer to that question. So I see people coming in as I knew what happened, and I don't want you to be lost, folks. Uh, Tricia, who just joined the class, LaDonna, we're playing a Kahoot game. So you need to go on your phone or your computer computer and type in kahoot.it. That's K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. And then the PIN number to the game is 325-4022. And um, Tricia, you do have your camera on. You don't have to, okay? You're very lovely to look at and everything, but no one else has theirs on. So it's up to you. I, and we would prefer to have your microphone off so that we don't pick up background noises um, that's going on at the house, okay? Um, we're gonna go to the next question. Just do the best you can. Before we do, we did get a score on question number one. Three people got it right. And in first place right now is Han Solo. 
Brandon and Mama Bear make up the top three competitors. So um, we will keep going and see what we can do. Let's get question number two. It says here, I can't even read it. Does not require referrals to see a specialist. The correct answer is a PPO. Now, um, only three people answered. Only one got it correct. So allow me to just tell you what all these initials stand for. By the way, this is going to be taped so you can watch it again. But even though I strongly, strongly urge, you're here not just to play a game with this uh, old dude from Arizona. You're here to learn. So please have some kind of writing instrument in your hand and make little love notes to yourself so of things to look up, okay? Um, uh, okay, that, that's all right. Just do the best you can. I got way lots of questions. So you, we're just getting started. Let me go through these initials. H-O-M is not a policy. Okay, it's just a bunch of letters. It's just a trick. Okay, PPP is not a policy. Okay, it's a bunch of letters. The two primary policies are a PPO and an HMO. In an HMO plan, your primary care doctor, um, just a second, your primary care doctor has to refer you to a specialist in an HMO. Okay. But a PPO, you don't need that. You can just go to a specialist who's in the network. So one, we even call that, and you'll see this on your test, a, a primary care doctor in an HMO is called a gatekeeper. You can't just go to a specialist. You got to go to the gatekeeper who then tells you, go to this specialist, okay? The PIN number is, and by the way, it's on the bottom of the screen, 325-4022. So you got to know PPO, you got to know HMO. Uh, I'm going to assume that that's enough of an explanation and let's move on. And the scoreboard has changed. Mama Bear moved into first place. Let's get another question up on the board. Next question says, where can you receive emergency care in an HMO? Okay, the correct answer is in or out of the service area. No one got it right. So let's explain an HMO. An HMO only treats you in network. So the answers that you put could be correct, except you got to go to their doctors, their hospitals, or you're not covered. Exception, emergencies. In an emergency, wherever you go, you will be covered. You know, we don't want a person who's having a heart attack, driving around town, trying to find which hospital is their hospital. You go to the closest one, save your life. The HMO covers anywhere if it's an emergency. Even if you're out of state, you go to Colorado to ski, you're having a heart attack, get to the closest hospital, your HMO will cover that, even though it's not in network. The key word there is emergencies, okay? Emergencies, you're covered everywhere. If it wasn't emergencies, you would have to stay in the network. Okay, we're all still friends and no one got it right. So the scoreboard stayed the same. Next question. Provides benefits in the form of services rather than reimbursement. As they used to say on a famous television show, what you talking about, Willis? What is this?
The answer is an HMO. Uh, it is services uh, rather than reimbursement. Um, half you got it right, half of you missed it. Uh, um, some of you thought it was a POS. Before we go on, if you want to take notes on this, take them. But I want to tell you, you know, there's there's a lot to teach with these policies, and I'm not going to teach for a long time. I'm just going to give you the highlights, okay? Um, the answer is an HMO. PPO pays in reimbursement. Well, let me give you an example. I have a PPO. I go to my doctor. The doctor treats me. The doctor then bills the insurance company to be reimbursed for the service performed. Okay. I go to urgent care hospital. They bill the insurance company to get reimbursed. That's a PPO. With an HMO, it's a different kind of thing. It is an organization that you and the doctors and the hospitals belong to the same organization, okay? And they, they are all under contract, so they are paid for the services, but it's not called reimbursement. Part of passing an insurance test is learning this weird language that they have. So what I'm just going to say, there is a long explanation for this, but I'm not going to make that now. I'll teach classes later on on health insurance where you can welcome to join my classes and I can go into more depth. Just understand right now, a PPO gets paid by reimbursement. HMO is a in the form of service, okay? And, and just going to have to ride with that one for now and... Um, in a later class or something, I'll be happy to go in more depth. And uh, maybe I can at the end of the class if you really care to know all that stuff. Um, we have a new leader. The new leader on the board is um, Han Solo moved into first place. Next question, second opinion. Okay, the correct answer to this is a concurrent review. I got to stop for a second. My friend Hannah from Columbus, are you like a spy from the insurance department that knows the answers to all the questions? You can put them on the chat so quickly and so accurately. I'm glad you're here, but how are you doing this? That's, that's unbelievable. I type fast. That, that's excellent. And, um, but thank you for doing that. I still don't believe you. I think you're a spy. I think she's here from the state insurance department to check on me. Um, if in the middle of the class, the cops come here and arrest me, that, that's Hannah's fault. Okay, that's what's going on here. All right, what are we talking about? Second opinion. Folks, there's three kinds of reviews you got to know. There's a prospective, concurrent, and retroactive review. A prospective review is something that's done before the treatment. An example of that would be you got to go into hospital for a surgery and they do, um, they pre authorize that the surgery is correct, that your insurance will cover it and things like that, pre certifying you before the service would be a prospective review. A concurrent review is going on at the same time of the treatment. You're about to get treated and we just wanna make sure it's correct, we get a second opinion. Second opinions are concurrent reviews. A retroactive review is after it's all done, how did we do? So you had a heart surgery, we wanna know how it went, um, whether, you know, how the doctor did, how the hospital did, and did you get better, whatever it's gonna be, but it's looking backwards to see you know, there are insurance companies that keep scores. They have tremendous amounts of data. They can tell you in your area which hospital has the best results for certain surgeries, which doctors have the best results because they are collecting huge amount of retroactive review after it's all done. But you're going to be called on to know prospective, concurrent, and retroactive. 
and our class um, secretary, note taker Hannah, has already written it down for you guys. So that's excellent. Next one. Oh, scoreboard. Mama Bear has passed Han Solo into first place. Um, next question says, HMO is based on A. It's based on a capitated basis. Now, why is obviously an incorrect answer. You know, these questions we made up, now look at, Melissa and I don't work for your state. We don't know what questions you're gonna get, but between us, we have taken lots and lots of tests. And the nature of the questions are very similar to the type of questions you'll receive. There'll be answers on there that are just obviously wrong. That's great because it makes it easier to find the truth. HMO based on a PPO, they're two different plans, okay? Per family amount, eh. I don't know what capitated basis is, but that makes sense. Now I'm gonna tell you what a capitated basis is. The word capita in Latin means head, okay? How do we know that? Have you ever heard of someone getting decapitated, right? So what happens in capitated basis is the insurance company pays the doctors per head. What's that mean? You, we see that you've got 100 people who chose you as a primary care doctor. We pay $20 a month for everyone who chose you. So 20 times 100, uh, what's that? A couple of grand. I, 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 it doesn't matter the number. It's, but they're going to give you a check whether you see them or not. That's what a capitated basis. They pay you per head every month. Why would an insurance company do that? Because when they finally come to see you, you don't get paid anything. You have already been prepaid for that patient. So there's no motivation for the doctor to make people keep coming back so they can run the bill up. They get paid in advance through a capitated basis. Only HMOs do that. Okay? Only HMOs do that. LaDonna moved into fourth place. Next question, cost sharing and high limits. That's your major medical. The basic medical is low limits and no deductible. So, so there's no real cost sharing. The insurance company pays the whole thing, but up to a very low limit on a limited basic medical policy. But with a major medical, you've got deductibles, you've got co-insurance percentages where you have to pay 20% of the bill. You have co-pays that you have to pay. We call those items cost sharing, okay? And the limits are very, very high. So uh, if you have a $200,000 medical bill, your insurance will be able to step in and pay the majority of that. That's what um, major medical does for you. Um, just a second here. Um, Let's see how we did on the scoreboard here. LaDonna moved into third place. First place is Mama Bear. Han Solo really close to second. And in this particular game, there's not many questions left. Okay, we, we have done seven out of 12. Next one, average rate of doctors in a geographic area. The correct answer on this is usual, customary, and reasonable 
In the industry, we call that UCR, but it won't ever say that on your test. It will say usual, customary, and reasonable. The purpose of this question, folks, is there's um, mode of premium payment is completely wrong. That's whether you pay the policy monthly, quarterly, semi-annually. That's got nothing to do with how doctors get paid. It's either going to get paid on a benefit schedule or a UCR. Now, on a benefit schedule, what they both have a schedule that the insurance company will pay, and that's all they'll pay, okay? The benefit schedule is usually set up for the whole state. Whether you're in the northern part of the state, eastern part of the state, the schedule works for everyone. The more popular one is the UCR, usual, customary, and regional, reasonable. So the insurance companies break the state into regions by geographic area or zip code or counties, but they break it up because medical bills in one part of the state much, might be much more expensive than another. Usually urban city areas are more expensive than rural areas. It doesn't matter which is more expensive. It, what it matters is on a UCR, the insurance company can set up payments depending on where you're treated, okay? So the UCR is always connected, write this one down, with the word geographic region, okay? It's connected to geographic region where a benefit schedule would be the same for everyone in the state. That's what that question's about. And let's see, it looks to me like Han Solo moved into first place ahead of Mama Bear. And there are, I think, four questions left to go in this particular game. Must be paid for before the insurance pays. And that is a deductible. As you folks, if you've ever had bills, car insurance, health insurance, whatever, and you have a deductible to satisfy, you must satisfy the deductible before the insurance comes in. The deductible gets paid first, okay? Um, there is another risk sharing item on here called coinsurance. And I'm sure we got com questions coming up in the future that will allow me to explain coinsurance, but understand deductible gets paid before the insurance company pays anything. And the leaderboard changed to Mama Bear. I think Hannah threw up an excuse. I accidentally clicked coinsurance. All right, we're gonna buy that one. The dog ate my homework, teacher. I'm just kidding with you, Hannah, you know. You know, I'm just having fun. Um, next question, which is not a metal plan, metal, heavy metal. Iron is not one of the metal plans. We buy insurance on metal plans since the passing of the Affordable Care Act. We buy gold, silver, or bronze plans. Um, iron is not a plan. Oh, there's actually four. Platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. There are four plans. Uh, platinum would be your most expensive. Bronze would be your least expensive. It's all spelled out in the book as you do your studying, but there are four metals and iron is not one of them. And this, by the way, is a question both Melissa and I have seen on state exams, okay? So it's an easy one. Um, it'd be nice if all your questions were easy, but they aren't, but this is, this should be one you should, once you know the four metals, platinum, gold, silver, and bronze, um, then this becomes easier to figure out. Um, LaDonna moved into third place. Mama Bear has got a fairly comfortable lead with only two questions to go. Works with doctors to provide care at a reduced rate.
And the answer to this question is a PPO. Now, folks, there's three legitimate policies that are answers here. A PPO, an HMO, and a POS. You have to know those three policies. HOM does not exist, okay? It's just thrown on there to, to tempt you. Um, the reason most of you put an HMO, let's see if I can explain this. When we study the HMO, the HMO is an organization that started with doctors and insurance companies. And if you join their organization, you can participate and, you know, for a payment, get your insurance by being a member of the organization. Now, PPO is different. PPO is not started by doctors and hospitals. It's started by an insurance company and they sign up doctors. So they work, the, the insurance works with the doctors to provide care at an affordable rate. The doctors have to agree to charge a certain amount, which the insurance company thinks is reasonable. And if you join the PPO, those doctors are agreeing to work with you at a certain rate. That's a PPO. An HMO, you would join the organization and the doctors are already a part of it, okay? I don't know if that separated them enough. When we study the HMO and the PPO, we will find out that the POS is a hybrid. There aren't many questions on POS, but it's a point of service plan. It's kind of a mixture of both a PPO and an HMO. Most of your state questions are going to be on HMO first and PPO second. On policies, those are the two big ones, okay? And we have one question left. By the way, one of the great features of our games is after the game is completed, we have an actual award ceremony. So you're one question away from our first award ceremony of the day. The question says, a combination, oh, I already told you the answer, a combination of an HMO and a PPO. That is the POS. I told you it was a hybrid between the two. Combination of an HMO and a PPO. So that completes our first and shortest game of the day, just kind of a little warm up. Next, we're going to have our first award ceremony. When I play this game, I tell everyone the same thing. The winner is a winner of the Golden Donut, a highly prestigious award that people really value. So we got, I think we know who won the golden donut, but let's find out. So on the podium, third place goes to LaDonna. Congratulations, LaDonna. Second place goes to Han Solo. And first place goes to -da -da -da, Mama Bear, golden donut winner. Runners up, fourth place, Trisha. Fifth place, Noemi. Congratulations to everyone who played. Now, I'm going to launch into another game with more questions, but I want you to absolutely feel uh, secure about answering any questions you have asking. Let's start with this. Please feel free to ask any questions you want of me so we can clear up what may be confusing you, okay? Um, So what I did here is I switched to another game. You should be able to see, um, I'm going to play a Kahoot. It's going to be Kahoot.it, but a different pin number, okay? And this is Kahoot.it with 3726840 is the pin number for this game. So get yourself signed in. So we can play this game.
So, so far we have two people in the game. Four people in the game. I know some people did say they had to leave. Uh, Brandon had to go to a family picture and some people have to leave and come back. So um, I'll just give another minute or so to make sure we get as many people in as possible. And if you do have to leave or your computer kicks you out or something, you can join the game in progress. And so it's always more fun to play the game than to just watch other people play it. Um, but I think I've waited as much as I dare so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to start our game. Folks, feel free to jump in if you're not in yet, okay? This is Kahoot at Home, at home and this one is called Types of Health Policies. Three, two, one. And the first question, works with doctors to provide care at a reduced rate. If there are questions that repeat themselves, good for you. Got a chance to get it right. Um, we made these uh, games up on different days and we try not to avoid repetition, but this was a repetition. Works with doctors to provide care to reduce rate. The answer is a PPO. I want to give you a test study tip. It's very good thing to take practice tests and practice questions and get you ready for the state exam. What's not a good thing is to take so many of them that you end up memorizing questions. Like this is the second time I saw this question. If I see the same question four or five times, I'll get it right every time. But the question is, do you really understand why it's right? I can guarantee that this exact question will not be on the state exam, but they will ask you about how PPOs and doctors relate to each other how HMOs and doctors relate to each other. And that's what you should be learning. And that you're going to learn by reading your text, okay? You can't learn that stuff just by listening to a teacher explain something for two minutes or by taking a lot of tests. Some study just requires you to look it up. And how do doctors relate to a PPO or how does a PPO relate to their doctors the answer to that one is it's independent doctors and hospitals that they sign up. Well, what does an HMO do? They actually have the doctors in the hospital join the organization. So they're not called independent anymore. They're, they're part of the HMO organization. So understanding why the answer is right is way more important than just getting it right. You know, I saw people who tested so much they can take a practice exam and get 90% because it's all questions they've seen. But then if you ask them to explain it, they don't know. You got to be able to explain it for no other reason that if the question comes in a different form, you can figure it out. Okay. Um, that That's what's important as you prepare for your exam. Uncle Peter told you. All right. First place in this new game is now Kelly. With Nemo in second, Trisha in third, and Mama Bear in fourth place. But we are just beginning. If you note at the bottom of the screen, this game has got 39 questions. Slap on your seatbelt. We're in for a great ride. Next question. Allows for the continuation of medical coverage following termination of group employment. What is that? That is COBRA. If you leave a group, you get offered the opportunity to stay on the insurance. And that opportunity is called COBRA, okay? And so just to trick you, we put in COBAR, in case you didn't study well. And then we put in the Affordable Care Act, which is Obamacare. Obamacare is just not the technical term for the Affordable Care Act. That had nothing to do with continuing on your coverage through COBRA. 
The answer is Cobra. And we have Trisha now in first place. It'll change a lot. Watch out for Mama Bear. She's already in second place. Next question. The longer the elimination period, the blank the premium. Whoa. Well, this would require, the answer, by the way, is lower. This requires us to know what is an elimination period. An elimination period, folks, is actually a deductible using time rather than dollars. Now, that may make sense to some of you who've been studying, and to others, they'll say, I don't know what this guy's talking about. Um, imagine you have disability income at work and you read the policy and it says, if you can't come to work because you're disabled, we'll pay you two thirds of your pay. That's a disability income policy. However, we have a two week elimination period. What that means is the first two weeks you're out, they don't pay you anything. Okay, you have to use your PTO or something like that. But starting in week three, the insurance company kicks in. That two weeks, that elimination period is like a deductible. Now, if you changed it from two weeks to four weeks so that you don't get paid for a longer period of time, what does that mean? That means the insurance company has some payments they're never going to make so they can lower your premium. Increase your deductible, lower your premium. I don't know if you've ever had the experience where you got car insurance, the rate goes up, you call your agent and they say, yeah, you got a $250 deductible on your car. If we jack that up to 500, it'll lower your rate. Increasing the deductible lowers your rate. Increasing your elimination period, which is really a deductible, uh, lowers your rate. And that's the principle involved in that. And the leaderboard, Mama Bear. Mama Bear is establishing, I'm going to, you have to be careful using pronouns today. I'm going to use the, because it says Mama. She is doing uh, an amazing job, okay? Next one. Can one buy a LTC policy through all the following ways except, watch the except questions. That means three of these answers are right and you're looking for the wrong one. Read the questions. So the wrong one is a writer to a medical policy. Well, let's just break this down since uh, no one got it right. Long-term care insurance is a policy that in the old days, we used to call it a nursing home policy. Well, it's way more than that now, but Basically, it covers non-medical expenses for people who can't take care of themselves. It could be as simple as having someone come over to the house and do your laundry for you or give you a bath while you recover from surgery. Those aren't medical things. So your medical insurance is not going to pay them. You need long-term care to, to cover that. Now, how do I buy long-term care? You can just buy an individual long-term care policy. It means you meet with an agent, you pick out the policy and you apply for it. Or your employer can provide long-term care as part of your group options. You can add long-term care as a rider or an extra benefit to your life insurance but you can't do it on your medical insurance. And there's a real simple reason because long-term care is a medical policy. You can't put a medical policy on top of a medical policy. You got your medical insurance and then you can buy long-term care as an individual policy. But if you have a life insurance policy, which isn't medical, you can kind of sew on a long-term care on top of it. So you can hook together life and medical you can't hook together medical and medical. 
Does that make any sense? I didn't promise you I'd make sense. I just tried, try my best. Okay. And if I get a certain percentage right and I help you out, that's kind of the best I, I can do. Next question. Oh, before that, it looks to me like the leaderboard stayed identical. Looks to me like no one got it right. I don't know if that's true or not. All right. Next question. HSA non-medical expenses will result in, um, if you've studied the course and you know a little bit about HSA, the question makes sense. If not, this is a foreign language. Okay. Most of you guys got it right. That's very, very encouraging to me. So that means there's at least there's some familiarity with it. An HSA is health savings account is actually just a checking account, but it's a special kind of checking account where any money you put into it comes off your income and you don't pay tax on it. But you can't open an HSA account unless you have a particular kind of medical insurance policy called high deductible health plan. And again, all that's explained in the book. I'm not going to teach you a course on HSA on one question. Besides which, the question isn't that. The question is, what if I take the money, which I can use to pay my medical bills and never pay taxes, by the way, if I use it for medical bills. But what if I take the money for non-medical? I go out and buy tires with my HSA money. Uh-oh. First of all, since you haven't paid tax on that money immediately, the IRS is going to put it in your income and get taxes from you. So you're going to pay taxes because you took the money out for the wrong reason. But on top of that, they charge you a 20% penalty. So my friends, if you're in a 20% tax bracket and you take out $1,000, you're only going to end up with 600 because the government's going to hit you with taxes and a 20% penalty, why you didn't use the money for medical expenses. But if I use that money to go get LASIK on my eyes, I, had, I got the whole thousand. Because I'm using it for medical expenses, I got all that money to use. So designed for you to pay no taxes, and you can use the money to pay medical bills. That's what a health savings account is supposed to do. If you don't, two serious penalties, taxes and a 20% penalty. And Kelly moved into third place and Mama Bear is lengthening the lead. I got to figure you guys out. See, I don't know you. I don't know who Mama Bear is. Well, Mama Bear actually has is, is cheating. I don't know if you guys know this. Mama Bear is cheating because she has studied this stuff. It's kind of like when you watch a basketball player and they're a really good shooter, you say they cheat because between games, they actually practice. And Mama Bear has been practicing, I can tell. All right, just, just an observer from the outside. That's all, okay? Next, a 30-day period at a nursing home is the elimination period for what policy? We used to call them nursing home policies, but we've changed their name. It is a long-term care policy, LTC. It's not Medicare. Medicare won't pay for a nursing home. They'll pay for a hospital for medical care, but not a nursing home. Hospice is only care for people who are dying. And by the way, Medicare pays that. Long terminal care is completely made up just to trick people who haven't studied enough. The answer is LTC, long term care. And what happened? Ooh, Mama Bear slipped. We're all picking on poor Mama Bear. She's probably a really wonderful person. But, anyways, uh, first place now belongs to Trisha. And Kelly, very, very close, but so's Mama Bear. It's a good race. But we're very early in the campaign here. 
Next question. The shorter the elimination period, the blank the premium. Um, if you have a shorter elimination period, your rates go up because you're expecting the insurance company to come in with money earlier, right? Short elimination period is like a low deductible. It'll make your policy be more expensive, okay? The opposite of what we did before. You guys went six for six on that. Everyone got it, right? Don't need to hear Peter talking. We're all set on that one. Move on. And since everyone got it right, the leaderboard did not change. But the top three people are very, very close. It's um, first place is Trisha, Kelly, and Mama Bear. And they are all very close. Kelly said three in a row correct. Most LTC policies are written as The answer to that question is guaranteed renewable. Uh, two out of five got it right. Um, the, this is really a question on uh, the renewability clauses in a health insurance policy. And the two most commonly used are guaranteed renewable and non-cancelable. They sound like the same thing, okay? The insurance company cannot take you away from you. They guarantee that you can renew it or non-cancelable, they cannot cancel you, but they're different. And the difference is a guaranteed renewable policy, they can never take it away from you, but they can raise the rates on what we call a class basis, where everyone who's got the policy gets the same increase. And they can do that at a certain you know, pre-described intervals. Most long-term care policies are written as guaranteed renewable. So you can tell your client, you, the insurance company can't come and take this policy away from you. Okay, that's good. But they do and can raise everyone's rates periodically. You just need to understand that. But let's look at the other's answers. Guaranteed cancel. That makes no sense. Who would buy a policy that's guaranteed to cancel? Okay, guaranteed low cost, another policy that doesn't exist. I mean, guaranteed low cost in, in health insurance? All right, what plan are you on? Guaranteed issue means that if you apply for it, you have to get it. The insurance company cannot decline you. And there are some policies that are guaranteed issue. Between you and I, don't tell anyone. Any policy following the guidelines of the Affordable Care Act, what we often call Obamacare, any policies following those laws have to be guaranteed issue. If you apply for it, you're going to get it. They cannot decline you. Long-term care policy is not one of those policies. It is a guaranteed renewable policy. So you need to actually on this sheet, you do need to understand what a guaranteed issue is. You need to understand guaranteed renewable and you need to understand non-cancelable, although it's not one of the questions. So make the love notes to yourself. I got to get these things figured out before my test. And the leaderboard, Kelly moved into first, Trisha second, Mama Bear third, LaDonna fourth, and Hans Solo fifth. Time for another question. Broad network. It's just the language. You're not familiar with the language. Broad network means you have a medical policy and they have a network of doctors and you wanna stay in the network, right? 
because you're going to get better prices. If it's an HMO, you've got to stay in the network, right? But that's what the network is. You can have a broad network or a narrow network. A broad de network means there's lots of docs and lots of hospitals in this network. And because there's a lot of them in there, it will be more expensive than a narrow network, which will cost you less, but you can only see these few docs and these few hospitals. But if you're willing to take a smaller, more narrow network, it will save you money on your cost. Broad network is more expensive. It pertains both to the doctors, the hospitals, the urgent cares. It's not just the hospitals, that's a network. It has more choices, not fewer, because it's a broad network. And it does absolutely affect the price. Want a lower price? Go to a narrow network. Um, so that's the general advice there. And the scoreboard, LaDonna moved into third and Mama Bear fourth. I think Mama Bear is tricking us. I think she's kind of in hibernation like bears do. And she knows there's almost 30 more questions. So I don't know. Just watch her. That's all I'm saying. Um, time out. Not that I'm going anywhere. Is this, along with having the time of your life, I mean, you haven't had this much fun since Christmas, but are, are, am I explaining it in a way that's helping break things down for you guys? Going too slow, going too fast. Um, I can't change my looks, so don't don't tell me that. Okay, I'm a very insecure person. I'm very always asking for affirmations. So this is the weakness I got. Next question. Under A, D, and D, what is the amount that is paid when there is loss of sight in two eyes or two or more limbs? That sounds gross. Okay, what we're talking about here is a policy called accidental death and dismemberment. So if you die in an accident, there's a payment made, or if you get dismembered, there's a payment made. ADD. Now, the two benefits that an ADD policy pays are principal sum and capital sum, okay? Uh, double indemnity, triple indemnity, are not the answers to this question, okay? They have more of a meaning if you're studying life insurance, okay? On health insurance, it, th those words don't make any sense. Capital sum and principal sum. If one dies in an accident or loses two limbs or two eyes, they will receive the principal sum. If they are dismembered with one limb, they will get a capital sum, which is usually about 50% of the principal sum. It's a lower amount. So you get more money if you lose two arms rather than one, okay? Uh, it's a weird policy. I'm not saying anything about that, but death, two limbs, principal sum. One limb, capital sum. And it's gonna be on your test. I have no idea why the states love to ask a question on A, D, and D, but they all do. And to get it right, you need to know principal sum is the full thing, the whole principle, and capital sum is part of the principle because you only lost one limb and you didn't die. The other thing about A, D, and D, which you may already know or you will find out, is to get the death benefit, the death must be caused by an accident and death must occur within 90 days of that accident. So you get in a car crash, you're in a coma, you die 100 days later, you get nothing. Accidental death is death within 90 days of the accident. So it's, it's, it's a weird policy, not one that I've ever been attracted to go out and sell, but the states love to ask you about it. And it's not that hard to learn capital sum and principal sum. So let's just tell the truth about it. Um, and on the scoreboard, 
Nemo moved into fifth place. The other ones have stayed the same. Kelly has got six in a row, correct? Moving on. The minimum benefit period on an LTC. Anybody remember what an LTC is? LTC is your long-term care. Um, and the minimum benefit period is one year, 12 months. Now I need to tell you, tell you what the heck a benefit period is, okay? In a long-term care policy, let's say that grandma wants to buy a long-term care policy. So if she goes in a nursing home, she can get it paid for. The first thing she decides is how much insurance she's going to buy. Oh, I read that a nursing home in my state's 5,000 a month. Can I buy 5,000 a month? Hey, if you can afford it, you can buy it. Okay. You decide how much insurance you're going to buy. The second one is you're required to have an elimination period. In other words, you have to have a deductible. And on long-term care, the minimum deductible is one month. So if you go in a nursing home, you're going to have to pay the first month. There's no policy you can buy with a smaller elimination period. So you want one month? You want to save money? Take two months, okay? And you pay the first two months, but after that, we got you. So you select the insurance, the elimination period, and finally... You're on claim and the insurance company's paying the nursing home for how long? You have a choice, okay? You want to buy a policy that'll pay you for three years, four years, five years. The longer you buy a benefit period, you're buying more insurance, right? Because we got to pay 50 grand a year for two years, three years, or four years, whatever, right? It'll raise your price. And this is a question about what's the smallest amount of time you can be covered for in a long-term care, and it is 12 months. What's the smallest elimination period? One month. So you got to write those notes down when you're understanding a long-term care policy. And uh, th that's an interesting policy and an interesting market if you want to sell it. But I'm not going to focus on that today. We're focusing on getting you guys some basic knowledge of the health insurance language. And the scoreboard, Mama Bear has moved up into third place. Uh, and uh, other than that, it looks to me like it's pretty much the same. Next question. Pre-certification. Pre-certification is a prospective review. Second opinion is concurrent and retroactive would be a, a review after everything is done. And that's a question we have had before and it's here again, okay? The difference between prospective, concurrent and retroactive. Now, according to my screen, okay? It's telling me we've got 10 people in the class. I'm also looking at this and I think only four people are playing. So it doesn't matter to me. You don't have to play to get the benefit of the class. But if you want to play the game, you can join it now. Okay. You don't have to wait around for the next game. All you do is go to kahoot.it and enter this pin number 372 6840. It's on the bottom of the screen. It's always more fun to play if you can. Now, if you're driving a car and your phone's not working or something like that, I understand. But um, don't have to play, but it's always more fun. If you want to join on, come on in. The water's fine, okay? And the scoreboard uh, remained exactly the same, but it's time to pay attention to this Kelly person who is now opening up a pretty significant lead. So I just want to pay attention to that. Next question refers to the length of time the disability payments will last for each disability.
That is the benefit period. We actually just talked about it with long-term care. Long-term care and disability income. In fact, I just made a five-minute video on this that I'm sure Melissa will be posting for free. It's comparing disability income and long-term care because they're actually in structure the same policy. Okay, just to tease you if you want to look at that. Okay, but what we're talking about here, the benefit period is how long the checks will last. The elimination period is how long do you have to wait for the check? Presumptive disability and probationary period have got zero to do with this question. They're both things you have to learn, but if so if you haven't studied, they are as attractive as any other answer. But when you study and you get things figured out, you'll know that those things, uh, they, they are a reality, but they got nothing to do with this question, okay? Nothing beats studying and reading the text. Not even a great game day with Senior Pedro here. Okay, let's see. And Solo has moved to fourth and Ke Kelly continues to just leave the rest in the dust right now. Limited policies. Time is up. The only correct answer is here, limited policies have no deductible. So let me just talk about the other ones. I got covers both accident and sickness. Limited policies don't have to cover both. An accidental death policy is a limited policy that does not cover sickness. It only covers accident, okay? Follows the ACA guidelines, Affordable Care Act, they absolutely don't. They don't follow any of the rules of the Affordable Care Act. So um, they can do that because they're not um, uh, a qualified health plan. Limited to a geographic area, not necessarily, but they all have no deductible. They pay first dollar. That's one of the signals. So first dollar, no deductible, low limits. That would be a limited policy, okay? Let's see how we're doing on the scoreboard. No motion. Everything stayed the same. Next question. ACA changed all except three of these are right about the Affordable Care Act. One of them is not right. That's what an accept question is. Okay, I only give you 20 seconds to answer and only two peoples were able to guess. Uh, by the way, don't be afraid to guess. No one kicks you out of class for missing these things. Come on, just have fun. Um, let's just walk this through. The ACA did change dependent children's coverage because it allowed children to stay on the plan, parents' plan till age 26. So that was a change they made. They changed the pre-existing condition clause saying if you get an ACA policy, it must cover all pre-existing conditions. So that was new, okay? Um, it didn't change age-rated policies. Older people still pay more than younger people. It did change the lifetime limits. What you'll find out is that for the essential benefits in the policy, there's no limit on your insurance coverage. It doesn't stop at a million or 2 million. If you are quadriplegic and you're gonna get immense bills for the rest of your life, you can never run out of insurance. That was one of the changes in the Affordable Care Act. So it made three of those changes. It just, it didn't make everyone pay the same rate. Older still pays more than younger, okay? And, the people stayed the same, the numbers changed a little bit. I hope as we're going through, if written on air, getting on areas and you're just saying, I, I don't know this, that you're making notes of it, okay? And the small explanation I'm able to give you people is 
isn't complete. You got to study. I tell people, if you come into the room having never studied before, I'm like a dimmer switch in a room. I'll turn on some lights so you kind of know where things are, but it's not clear yet. The only way to get it clear is you got to go and study and read, and then hopefully it clarifies. Or if you have been studying, sometimes the explanations may clear up some confusion that you have. That's that's what these games are about, okay? Uh, next is how is coverage paid out on a long-term care policy? Even people who study oftentimes don't know this one. Everyone make a guess here. There's only 10 seconds left. So put something down. Five seconds. Let's see. Anthea has already gotten it right. A lot of people don't know this, but you buy it per day. When I teach, I often talk about like grandma's going to buy 5000 a month. So I talk like that, but you actually buy so many dollars a day because you don't have to be there a full month to collect. If, if you're in there after your elimination period, you stay another two weeks and then you go home, uh, you're gonna get 14 days of payment, okay? So you buy it per day. Just make a note. That's another common test question. Um, we've got 60, we aren't even halfway through this thing. So, um, Lots of time. The longer the benefit period, the blank the premium. Benefit period. That's how long your check is going to keep coming in. If you're going to buy longer benefit period, you're buying more insurance, which means you got to pay more money. If I buy 50, I'm going to change from data to year. If I buy $50,000 a year of coverage and I have one year benefit period, the insurance company's on the limb for 50 grand. But if I buy three year benefit period, the insurance company's on the limb for 150 grand. 150 is going to cost you more than 50. The longer the benefit period, the more you're going to pay. And the people stay the same. Numbers changed a little bit. Next question. Requires total and permanent loss of two eyes, limbs, eyesight, or hearing. Now that sounds a lot like principal sum on the accidental death policy, right? Death or loss of two limbs. But this actually is referring to another coverage called presumptive disability. And it sneaks onto the test and it's really simple, folks. Presumptive disability, in other words, if you have this, you're presumed disabled, right? If you lost two limbs, they aren't growing back. So you're presumed disabled. And the, to get the presumptive disability benefit, the answer to the question is two. You have to lose two eyes or two limbs or permanent eyesight, permanent hearing, two ears, two eyes. The answer is two. If you've lost two, you qualify for benefits on presumptive disability. Um, I don't really... But I've never sold a presumptive disability policy, but for the test, all I did was I remembered presumptive disability two, one limb, you don't get anything, okay? So just that's what I did. And maybe you can make the same note. And LaDonna moved into fifth place with that question. Let's do another one. Associations are... Associations, this is kind of a group question. You can buy 
group medical insurance if you're an employer, but you can also buy it if you're an association. So associations are aleatory, contributory only, non-contributory only, or either contributory or non-contributory. This is a question about what's contributory and what's non-contributory. That's what this is about. And, and a lot of you may already know this, so be patient with me. Contributory means for you to get this benefit, you must pay some of the premium. Non-contributory means the employer or the one or the association is paying the whole premium. So it's free to you. That would be non-contributory. An association can offer either a contributory or non-contributory plan. They're not restricted to one or the other. Group insurance is not restricted to one or the other. You can offer a plan that the people have to pay for or that they don't have to pay for. Or you can offer the medical insurance contributory and the life insurance non-contributory. You know what I mean? But that it just has to be the same for everyone. The plan has to be the same for everyone. So it's really a question of, do you understand what contributory means and what non-contributory means? Aleatory is a word we learned way back at the beginning of class, not have anything to do with this question. But just as a reminder, aleatory means that insurance is an unequal exchange. Uh, Melissa has got a great explanation for this. She says, think of a lottery. Aleatory a lottery. You pay 10 bucks for a lottery ticket and you win $5 million. Insurance, you pay a couple hundred dollars a month, you go in the hospital and they pay a hundred thousand dollar bill. What the insurance offers is more than what you pay. It's unequal, like the lottery is unequal. And we the word for it is aleatory. Okay. And Hans Solo made a big jump, is now moved into sole possession of second place. All the following are characteristics of group policies, except pay attention to accept questions. It means three are right, one is wrong. The wrong one is must be contributory. That doesn't make any sense. You can offer both contributory or non-contributory. That's the wrong answer. Now, sometimes we miss these questions and we forget that we have to find the wrong answer. The other ones are all true. Certificates of insurance go to individuals. The master policy, there's only one policy and that goes to the group sponsor. The the uh, participants get a certificate and a group formed for a purpose other than buying insurance. So in other words, if you're a company and you sell stuff to the public, you don't exist to buy insurance. You can buy group. But if the group of us decided to have a barbecue this Saturday and we decided that group insurance is cheaper than individual, so why don't we just call ourselves the insurance barbecue club and we buy group policy for the 10 of us. Can't do that. The only reason you exist is to buy group insurance and that can't be done. There must be a reason for existing other than group insurance. Now I have to tell you one other thing. If you're gonna choose to do practice questions for your exam, and you should, these accept questions are a gold mine of information that most people forego. When you have an accept question, you're looking for the wrong answer. Oh, I got this right. I know you can be contributory or non-contributory and you move on. Big mistake. On these accept questions, I want to either learn or make a note that certificates go to individuals, group has to be formed other than just to buy insurance, and the master policy goes to the group sponsor. Why? Those are all true. They could show up in the exam in the future 
And I have a chance right now to make a note of three true statements. And most people leave that opportunity because they found the one wrong one and skip on. Don't do that. Look at those three correct answers. Maybe you didn't know that the master policy only goes to the group sponsor. This, these accept questions when you're studying a tremendous opportunity to increase your knowledge, okay? So don't just skip over them. Thank you, LaDonna. It's on tape, so you'll be able to watch the end of it. Um, let's see, Kelly, five in a row. Let's do another question. A combination of an HMO and a PPO. That's your POS, point of service. Um, I'm not going to describe the point of service, okay? That, that'll be in my class on health policies where I can go into more detail. The purpose here is to just to have some fun and to point out some items you should be aware of. And you guys all got this right anyway. So why go on and on with that stuff? Uh, leaderboard Mama Bear has now moved into third place. And we still got a lot of questions to go on this exam, this game. Must have 100 members, be active for two years, and hold annual meetings. What is that creature? That is the definition of an association. You got to have 100 members, be in active for two years, and hold annual meetings. What would be an example of an association? A homeowners association. Once they've been active for two years, they can actually buy group insurance for their members. Okay. There's an exception here. I don't think it pertains to this class. If anybody's here from the state of Arizona, they have 25 instead of 100. But if you're not from Arizona, this, this works perfectly. If you're active for two years, and they have to hold annual meetings, they are now deemed to be an association and you can buy group insurance. It's not the definition of any group plan. You don't have to have 100 members to be a group. It's not an employer and it's not a sole proprietorship. It's the definition of an association. And leaderboard stays the same. I would say right now that Kelly's lead is pretty unsurmountable. Let's see what we can do. Kelly, don't answer any questions five in a row. See, no, don't, don't listen to me. The tortoise and the hare, right? The hare takes off so far ahead, decides to take a nap, and the tortoise goes by and passes him. Never heard that story? You should be old like me then. We all heard that story. Where can you receive emergency care in an HMO? Let's see, we should all get this one right. Okay, that's in and out of network for emergency care. Again, I think people had to leave. So I don't really don't know how many people are here actually participating, but only three are answering questions. So if you want to answer the questions, I'm going to say this again. All you need to do is go on kahoot.it, put in 372-6840 and play the game. If you can't, you can't. I'm not going to um, change that. All right. Covers rent, utilities, employee salary, leased equipment if the small business owner becomes disabled. <clears throat> this is a business disability income policy. When you do the course, you'll know that you have to learn three business disability income policies. The business overhead expense does not pay the employer's pay. What it does is it pays the bills at work. So the rent, 
the lease payments, the employees all get paid while the employer's out on disability. That's called, and it's, it's a great name. It's the business overhead that the insurance company will pay if you buy that policy, okay? Um, the name says it. We're now going to go on to question 25 out of 39. Where can you receive inpatient hospital care in an HMO? Hmm, trick question here. The technically correct answer is in or out of the service area. If you put in network only, I understand why. In, a, in HMO, you got to stay in the network or you're not covered. However, that's not what it said. Where can you receive inpatient hospital care? Technically, you can go anywhere if it's an emergency. So it's kind of a trick question, okay? But we want to make sure that while it's a rule, you got to stay in network, that rule goes away for emergencies. And since the question didn't specify, technically you can go anywhere if it's an emergency. So it's it's a tricky question, I'll confess to that, but it's purposely tricky, so to make sure you understand that. If it's something you're planning on, you want to have rotator cuff surgery, you got to be in the network or they're not paying. But if it's an emergency, you're in a car accident and your shoulder's all wrecked up and you're in great pain, they take you to the emergency room in the hospital, that'll be covered. So uh, in or out in an emergency. And you probably all knew that. You just want to uh, argue with me about that, but that that's what we're doing. Uh, so Kelly, Han Solo, Mama Bear, Trisha, and LaDonna allows a company to find and train a replacement when the covered person becomes disabled. This is another business disability policy. And the answer to that is a key person policy. Somebody put business overhead. No, business overhead pays the rent, the utilities, the employees' salaries, but that's not what's happening here. A key person in the, in the business can't come to work. And if you've purchased a key person policy, the insurance will pay the business money to go and hire somebody else. That's called a key person policy. Next question. We still got some number of questions to go. Somebody said they're having fun. I hope so. That's what we're doing this for. Allows a business partner to buy out disabled partner's share and keep the business going. This is actually a buy-sell agreement. It completes the three business disability policies you need to know. Key person ensures that person that's very important to the business. And if they get disabled, the check doesn't go to the person. It goes to the business so they can hire someone. The second one here is a buyout, a buy-sell agreement where you have partners and one can't come to work because they're severely injured. And if you, you put a period of time, if you can't come to work for a year, then you got to sell your part of the business to me. And this policy creates enough money for the working person to buy out the disabled person. So the disabled person gets a chunk of money. The one who's working gets to own the whole business and it's a buy sell agreement. So you got key person, buy, sell. And the third one is, see if anybody's awake here at the end of the day, the business overhead that pays the rent and utilities. Those are the three business disability income policies you'll need to be familiar with. And solo, three in a row. Next question. The shorter the benefit period, the blank, the premium. 
And we got two different questions going on. One's elimination period and one's benefit period. And that'll change your answer, right? This is benefit period. The shorter the benefit period, the lower the premium because you're buying less insurance. Everyone missed this. You think I'm asking about the elimination period, which is a deductible, okay? This is, says, the shorter the benefit period means you're buying less insurance, only buying one year instead of three, okay? And the checks start stop at the end of the benefit period. So of course it's gonna cost you less. So please pay attention to whether we're asking you about a benefit period or an elimination period. And if that's confusing to you, A, write it down and study it. B, we will be teaching classes on health insurance. Look for them, sign up for them and get them. C, buy Melissa's course on health insurance, which is very reasonably priced. And she goes through every chapter you need to know I, I don't know if you've listened to Melissa. She's a phenomenal teacher. So those are the options you have and take the one that works for you. Um, looks to me like the leaderboard stays the same. We're not getting much motion because there's a spread between you people. It's harder to make it up. Let's go to question 29. HSAR, interesting English. HSAR, tax deductible. Everybody got it right. Um, I think it's the only one of the choices that really makes sense if you understand anything about an HSA. Um, some other people have joined. I just want to remind you, if you've joined, we don't have a lot of time left to this game, but you're certainly welcome to play it by going to kahoot.it and entering the pin number 372-6840 which you see at the bottom of the screen. You don't have to play, but if you want to, come on in. I'm gonna to go to question number 30. And it says, what is the deductible called in a disability income policy? The deductible and the disability income policy is your elimination period. That's the time deductible. Um, one of the frustrating things about, look, these games are fun. We're just playing a game. You're getting some ideas. But as an instructor, I would love to take some time and explain this to you. But that's not the purpose of these free game nights, okay? I'll give you a, a, an overview only. Uh, if you want more detail, please join us. We've got several options for you to go into more detail with us, okay? Next one. <clears throat> Preventative care is the main goal of? HMOs. Please, for your test, every one of you, whether you're playing the game or just watching and listening, connect an HMO to preventive care. All the states connect them. They'll say preventive care is the main goal of an HMO. HMOs are most known for preventive care. Um, just connect preventive care to HMO so that you don't miss any questions about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> H -A H O M was put in there, Mary, just for you, <laughs> just, to, just to see if at the end of a long game, if we can trick you. Um, next question. What is designed to replace lost income from an injury sickness prevents a person from working? That is the definition of a disability income policy. If you can't go to work because of a sickness or an accident, 
you can get an income from your disability income policy. Everyone got it right. Mic drop, teacher leaves, everybody's perfect. Under an ADD, when must the death occur within to pay out? I did say that. Hey, everyone was paying, all three of you <laughs> were paying attention. 90 days, that's exactly right, okay? We only have, I think, six questions left in the game before the Golden Donut Award Ceremony. Multiple diseases covered on one policy. This is, um, I wrote this question before the class. And this is, and you guys all missed it probably because of a bad question. But anyways, I wanted to get the difference between a dread disease policy and a critical illness policy. A dread disease policy covers one illness, but a critical illness policy will cover several illnesses, okay? Multiple diseases, like it, a, a, a dread disease policy might be a cancer policy, but I sell a policy that covers cancer, heart attack, and stroke. That would be a critical illness policy. It's a dread disease policy on steroids. Now, why isn't it major medical? Major medical does cover multiple diseases, but actually a major medical covers all diseases, all accidents, okay? So if you've got some weird bacteria picked up when you were on safari in Africa, that's covered. Okay, where a dread disease and critical illness only cover some policies, they're just more on the critical illness. Okay, and probably shouldn't have put major medical as an option because you could argue with me that it does cover multiple diseases. So, okay, but really, I want you to know the difference between a dread disease, one policy, and critical illness, which be multiple diseases. And uh, right now, I don't think we can change this leaderboard at all with only, uh, looks like we got five questions left. It's not like two. Provides benefits in the form of services rather than reimbursement. Anyone remember? It was one of the first questions we had. It is HMO. PPO is reimbursement, okay? Um, HMO is services. So write that down. Services, HMO, reimbursement, PPO. Poor POS. <laughs> you got to study it. It's hardly ever on the test. And all you really need to remember, folks, is it's a hybrid between a PPO and an HMO. And if you take our courses, we can explain it in more detail when we when time allows, okay? Um, and if you really... Or you can read the book and it'll tell you that too. Next question. Coinsurance all except? That means there's a wrong question in here. Three of them are right. I think it was a tough question. Um, the two who are left playing, um, by the way, since there's so few of us, I'm taking the two people out to a steak dinner at Fleming's at the end of the class, um, just to make you people who aren't playing feel really crappy anyways, but I lie all the time. It's like the golden donut. Anyways, back to business. Um, coinsurance always follows the deductible. After the deductible, you have to pay coinsurance. Um, it is risk sharing for sure. You have to pay some of the bill. And if you have 70, 30, that means you're going to pay 30% of the bill. So it'll cost you less than if you had 80, 20, when you're only going to pay 20% of the bill. The more of the bill you pay, the less the insurance company has to pay, the lower your premium. So red, blue, and whatever that other color is, brown, um, are all true. It says no limits. What I mean by that is, you know that 20% you have to pay? 
Does that go on forever? If you have a $200,000 hospital bill, that 20% alone is 40 grand. So if you go and you have major heart attack and you're in a hospital and intensive care and you leave $200,000 later, you have to pay 40 grand on your coinsurance? No. Why? There's a stop limit. So it doesn't go on forever. No limits is wrong. Coinsurance does stop at some point. Um, actually, I have a phrase for it called maximum out of pocket. Moop. Three questions to go. Does not require referrals to see a specialist. That is a PPO. The HMO does require that you get a referral to see a specialist. And that's why you have primary care doctor called a gatekeeper in the HMO. So make sure you got that stuff clear. All right. Let's go to question 38. Only two questions left. Preventative care is the main goal. Everyone's going to get this in three seconds. Main goal of preventative care, the main preventative care is main goal of which policy? HMO. HMO preventative care. Learn that. Get a tattoo on your wrist that says HMO preventative care. Then they'll make you cut off your hand to go take the test because you can't bring notes in, but small matter. You got two hands. So anyway, that's preventative care, HMO. Last question. No tears. I don't want you crying because the game's over, all right? There's no crying in baseball. Last question. HSA non-medical expenses for people over 65, Medicare age, will result in? Blue, being taxed only. So as a reminder, if you're going to go and spend your HSA on non-medical items, you're going to pay taxes plus a 20% penalty unless you're over 65. If you're over 65, you still have to pay the taxes, but there's no penalty. So no penalty if you're spending your HSA on non-medical stuff over 65. Now, you people in this class are all probably so young, you can't imagine being 65, but that's the rules. How about the Golden Donut Award Ceremony? Third place goes to Mama Bear. Second place, Han Solo or Han Solo. And first place goes to Kelly. Kelly did a magnificent job on this test. Trisha finished fourth. LaDonna finished in fifth place. Hey, we all win just by playing. Um, let me go back to the beginning here. We'll take our screen off and uh, okay, folks, I hope you had a good time, but I, I hope more importantly, you learned some things. You got some principles and guidances to get yourself studying and move yourself along. A um, couple of advertisements before we leave. Anyone on the internet's going to tell you the same thing, please like and subscribe that's moves us up so more people can hear about us um that's very very important if this was helpful and worthwhile i appreciate your comments drop a little note into our mama bear melissa just tell her how the class went and we use those or shamelessly sell ourselves so that people who've never heard of me i'm obviously not the queen and I offer a class, they'll say, oh, some people think that this guy's an okay teacher. So anything you want to write would be appreciated. Special thanks to Hannah, our secretary, who's a massive typer uh, and just completely puts all this stuff down. You were a big, big help. And I um, want to wish you guys all the best. Use us. Go to Insurance Exam Queen website. Use anything in there that'll help you get it done. 
And um, I hope you had a good time and more importantly that you learned. Outside of that, stay safe, stay healthy, eat healthy, have a nice evening, and um, hopefully we'll see you around again. I'm here. I always stay for an extra minute and say somebody has a specific question. Like, Peter, I, can you please tell me more about that POS? I know you're all dying to hear that. Well, anything like that, I'll stick around for a minute or two to help you if you want. If I don't hear from you, I'll sign off. But thank you, everybody. Oh, you're welcome. You're all welcome. I will have a great night. Well, seeing there's no questions, once again, thank you to everyone. I'm going to end the class. Don't Can you take hear me? It, but um, come back and see us, okay? There's Can you hear me? Time. And um, I'll see you around the ranch. Good night, good luck, good health to everybody. Hi, Peter. Can you hear me?